he wants someone that's going to get the deal done. That's so what he I'm wants. going in there with a letter from the Fannie Mae. I'm going in with a letter from two or three other brokers that have done deals with me to say he doesn't retrade, he doesn't play games, he's a closer. Welcome to the Wheelbarrow Profits Podcast, where you get multifamily investing made real. Learn from top players in the real estate investment world as they share their secrets with you and discover proven strategies on apartment investing that actually work. To learn more about Wheelbarrow Profits, visit jakeandgino.com, your one-stop shop for everything multifamily. Now to your hosts, Jake and Gino. Hello, everybody. This is Jake Stenziano, host of the Wheelbarrow Profits Podcast, here with my co-host, the multifamily mentor, the coach, the chef, the father of six, the best-selling author, the G-Daddy, Gino Barbaro. Gino, how's it going? J-Love, I'm doing good. How you doing, bro? Always making it happen. Hey, we got another G-Daddy on the show, and uh, if you don't know him, that's his fault. His words, not mine. My fault, man. My fault. My bad. (laughs) Our guest today is New York Times best-selling author of The 10X Rule, multifamily real estate beast, I thought that was me, and godfather of sales. Ow! You know, this is going to be good. You ready for this? I can't wait, bro. I'm, I'm dying right now. Let's get this thing going. <laughs> All right. Without further ado, Grant Cardone, welcome to the show. Hey, great to have you. Uh, great to have me on the show. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> welcome, <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, so I'd like to take it back. I'd like to find out what year you started investing in multis and why you made it your investment vehicle of choice. Okay, well, so, I mean, I probably started investing in, you know, b- before I ever financially put any money in, in apartments. Um, by the way, that's the only thing I buy is apartments, okay? And, and we'll talk about some of, the other, some of the other vehicles I would expect. But I think houses are a terrible deal. I mean, I learned from personal experience that, that a house investment is, I, I know everybody believes you got to have a house and you got to buy a house. It's, it's one of the dumbest single dumbest investments you'll you'll ever make in your entire life. I would rather pay more in rent, okay, than than have a mortgage that would supposedly save me money. But I started investing in uh multifamily when I was I guess uh 28 or 29 years old. I didn't buy anything until I was 34. But I was looking every weekend. Okay, I bought one house for seventy-eight thousand. I rented it in Houston, Texas. I rented it. I was all excited, guys. I mean, I, I oh my god, I'm making money, man. There, man. I was freaking out, man. I remember these two chicks that I rented the house to. It was a little two-bedroom house. I rented two sisters. I'm like, oh my god, I'm making a hundred dollars a month, man. I was pumped, right? And then they moved out at nine months, and then I was a hundred percent vacant. And I got terrified. Dude. First month was one thing. Second month, third month, I'm freaking losing my mind because now I'm losing 600 because I'm paying mm-hmm. the mortgage, right? And uh, I realized then, I said, I'll never, ever buy a single rooftop ever again. It wasn't rental property that was the problem. It was I had, I was too dependent upon too few customers, which is exactly what my other businesses had been built on. I needed lots of customers, not a few. Because if you lose that one great customer, let's say Microsoft or Google or Facebook, that they're giving you all this money, dude. The problem is you're dependent upon them. You know, I Steve, agree. Steve, my friend Steve Harvey, man, he's got a radio show, a TV show, a TV show on Sunday night. He is not dependent upon one today upon one source of income. Same thing that, and that, and that's why uh, I like um, multifamily. Well, isn't that the reason you want to have well, the more customers you have, the more people you can service, the more money you can make. So if you have 30 single family homes where you're running around every neighborhood, you know, trying to collect 30 rents when you have six or 700 apartments like we do, it's just the economy is a scale and it's so much easier to manage. And, it's, you know, you got that income coming in. So the more people you can service, the more money you're going to make. And that's what entrepreneurs, I think, forget. I mean, I have one restaurant, bro, and that one restaurant was killing me. I can only service the people coming in that one, one location. And, you know, when you got a dad who's, you know, whipping you and saying, you know, old school, you got to stay there you got to live and die by it it yeah, kills yeah. you you have that mindset and you got to get out of that mindset there's that fear factor and it took me a while i had to meet this guy and you know he pulled me out of the doldrums and he said to yourself he said guys we've got to scale up and that's why multifamilies are just powerful and the ability to scale up is what you know is what's attractive to jake and i yeah and i i didn't know all that i didn't know all the I didn't understand the leverage. I didn't understand paying down debt over long periods of time. I didn't understand I, I, expenses or management, nothing. Okay. I, 
I just knew, and by the way, I've never read a book on real estate. Okay, this is my first read. You, got the, you got the only one you need. Right <laughs> I'm there. surprised. You got a lot of knowledge, in, huh? <laughs> but dude, look, but I'll, tell, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, there was a book that I bought. It was called, uh, what was the name of that book? Uh, Building Your Real Estate Dynasty or Empire. Uh huh. Y- uh, y'all know that book? It's black no. and gold. Building Your Real Estate. You know, you've read every real estate book. How do no, you know I, that? I one? haven't read that one, so. <laughs> Dude, I, di- I didn't read it. I bought the book, never read it. But the title, the title mm-hmm. inspired me. I mean, today I own almost 4,000 apartments. You know, I want to go to 40,000. That's the next, that's our, my goal right now. I want to, I want to 10X awesome. that target. So, um, even though I never read the book, How to Build a Real Estate Empire, the cover gave me my money's worth. That part. copy, it got you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So great, we like to buy uh, mom and pop apartments. That's what we focus on. These these properties that have no systems, nothing in play. You know, guys who don't do credit checks or anything. What do you focus on when you're looking at apartments as far as value adds, as far as niches? Yeah, well, I, I, my niche is tertiary markets. Tertiary mm-hmm. means for for your yeah. Elaborate watching. on that. Some folks I think are gonna yeah. Yeah. So there's primary markets. Miami would be a maybe prim, my, Miami. Yeah, Miami would be a primary market. Miami, New York, Chicago. Dow, uh, San Francisco, Dallas, Houston. These are primary markets. A secondary market, let's say if you're in Houston, a secondary market to Houston would be maybe Katy or San Antonio would probably be a secondary market. You mm-hmm. know, th- things change as things get really good. Then shit, all of a sudden, man, you could have like El Paso could be a primary market because everybody gets hallucinating mm-hmm. uh, on, on positivity. And then a tertiary market would be like St. Lucie. Uh, probably a little town you've never heard of. I, I focus really on tertiary markets, uh, th- th- third, third kind of in tier, the, where where I don't have a lot of, I'm not, I don't have a lot of competition from big equity firms that are chasing deals in Miami or Chicago or San Francisco or the major markets. So I'm guessing, and, and don't let me put words in your mouth, but you're getting your price per unit less because you're going to tertiary markets. There's less competition, and because you're getting your price per unit less, you're getting better returns on your investment. Is that is that fair? Yeah, maybe. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know how to measure that really. I, I mean, I can tell you the mistakes that I've made. You know, the first deals I ever bought was in San Diego, California. How it long was, was 19, that? 1995. The, the housing bust had just happened. The, the, oh, the credit yeah. and loan, say, the credit and the savings and loans bust. Mm-hmm. Literally, there was more U-Hauls leaving the state of California than going back into California. And I had been shopping real estate uh, for three years prior to that or four years prior to that in Houston, Texas. I moved to California and I didn't buy anything while I was in Houston. Every weekend I would shop apartment buildings. I wore out every real estate agent in Houston. They all said I was a flake. And I was, dude. I was a flake. There was no way I was going to buy anything. We've been there. I, I, I didn't have enough money. And I think you guys talk about this in your book about, hey, make sure you know all the agents because they're That's really right. in part. Well, right. I burn them all out. They all hated my guts. <laughs> and they all said that I would never buy anything. I moved to San Diego. And uh, ba- basically, those four years in Houston was an experiment. I was learning mm-hmm. without buying. I was learning what, what would have worked and what hadn't. The reality is... In 1995 or 96, I could have bought everything that I looked at in Houston, and I'd have made money. Yep. So when I moved, and I and I could have kicked myself in the head for not buying anything, but I didn't have enough money, and I didn't have enough courage, and I didn't have enough knowledge. So when I got to San Diego, I promised myself, I said, if I ever see this market again, you see, you can see something. After you look at enough property, as you guys know, you can see and feel something happening. And I was driving in downtown San Diego, and I was like, Dude, this is it. I feel it. The same thing I felt in Houston when it was good. So I bought my first deal in a place called La Mesa. It was 38 units. Uh, That's typically a a big first deal for a guy, you know. And um, it was uh, was a a deal a guy paid. I think he paid $4 million for it. When he bought it, I paid $1.9 million. I put three hundred fifty grand down. Uh, it was a per pound, based on what you're saying. It was per unit. I thought it was cheap. I was buying it for less than you could replace it for. Yep. It gave me an immediate return. Again, I didn't know anything about management. I don't know any tricks. Um, I don't know what your question was exactly now, but but man, we're just rolling with it. You're doing good. Yeah, man. we're just going. So so, but but I made my decision on that deal because I'm chicken, man. I'm I'm a I'm a basically a coward investor. What do you mean by that? Uh, I I need I, I want money now. Mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm You're not, not speculating, dude. I'm not building apps here. 
Right. Okay. You're investing. You're, you're investing for today, and that's the problem. People are buying and buying and speculating. They're like buying a stock. You're fixing and flipping. That's not investing. That's speculating. Go buy a mutual fund. That's the same thing. Those are two different things. Let's compare apples to apples. What you're talking yeah. about is I want a 10% actual cash on cash from day one, and then whatever happens down the road, the forced depreciation, that's in my pocket, bro. That's how I'm getting paid. People yeah, don't yeah. look at it that way. Yeah, and because, because I don't know a lot about the space. Remember, I'm, I'm, at that time, I'm 34 years old. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a million dollars saved from my other businesses. My other businesses are pumping, dude. They're working. They're, they're. I mean, I'm, I'm paying attention to them and they're grinding out. And I, and I mm-hmm. figured out how to make these businesses work. And so, and and the third thing I was doing was I was shopping real estate. I wasn't reading books. I was walking properties. Yes. You know what feels good? What doesn't feel good? Like literally observing. What's the difference between wood and concrete and 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 and, and steel casings, uh, stairs? Or uh, wood stairs, you know, what, what you 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 can't read about that in a book. Right? Mm-hmm. What are the different neighborhoods and zip codes like? You know, what, what you you start getting a feel of something, right? So, when I finally saw this deal in La Mesa, California, uh, or Vista, California, this this the, the property was called La Mesa. Actually, it's these thirty eight units. As soon as I looked at them, I'm like, dude, I'm buying this deal. Now, the guy that was with me was a professional real estate guy. And he's like, man, I think the price is too high. I'm like, dude, I'm buying this deal. I knew like that quick. Mm-hmm. I knew. Okay. Now I put 350 grand on that deal. The first month it paid me $3,000 after the debt. That's right. After the expenses. And I thought, oh, maybe it's a phenomenon. You know, maybe we just got lucky the first month or maybe the closing, there was extra money at the closing and they're distributing that money. <laughs> but dude, the next month it paid me 3,500 bucks. And the third month, they paid me $3,000. i am like, I'm going to go buy me another one of these deals. <laughs> I like this. Uh-huh. So I went and bought uh, – this was the best return I ever had on money before. Okay, I put three hundred fifty grand down and I already had $10,000 of my money back. I'm like, dude, in 30 months, my down payment's back. That's right. See, that's how I buy real estate. I don't buy – I assume the worst case scenario. I assume that – I look at deals and I'm like, I'm at 94% occupancy right now. What happens? Where's my break even? How low can I go, dog? And how long can I last? So if you're buying real estate, you need to ask yourself this question. How low can I go and how long can you last without losing it? So, so I look at how low can the occupancy go, okay? Can you, can you, how low can the occupancy go to break even, to pay my debt, to pay my expenses, to fix the roof, to change carpets, all the problems, how low can I go so that I don't lose money? Because uh, 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 the number one rule in investing, as you guys know, Warren Buffett says, number one rule is don't lose money. Number two rule, go back, go to, back to number, to number one. one. That's right. <laughs> hey, I want to jump in real quick here because you, um, you were talking about you had some good money saved up. You're making good money with your businesses. Then you get into real estate and you're saying, because this, this is a snowball effect that I like to talk about. You're starting to grind it out. You're starting to make a little bit of money, 3000 bucks a month. Then I'm wondering, did the cost seg start to kick in and those things after a while? Because you're a high income earner, and then you're going to see, wow, I'm, I'm, I can accelerate depreciation on these babies. Yeah, and now dude, I'm keeping dude, I, more money. I didn't know. Look, I didn't know anything about this is, cost. This is seg. my journey too, and, I'm, and that's why I love it. I love to hear about this. Yeah, but I didn't know anything about cost seg, which yeah. is, uh, you know, it's an accelerated depreciation scheme that that the that. that that people know, and it is a scheme, by the way. Okay, let's let's just call it what it is. But it, it's the beauty of real estate. So I, your audience, I don't know if your audience know what cost seg is, but um, I didn't know about that kind of stuff, dude. I, di- I didn't start using that kind of stuff until like maybe five or six years ago, seven, maybe eight years ago. Yeah, I did my first cost seg, which is accelerated depreciation. Right, that's right. Basically, one of the beauties of real estate, unlike my other two businesses, is there's all these tax advantages. You know, in America. In America, the, 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 the rules are written by lawyers, okay? And lawyers happen to be the guys in Congress. So there's this incestuous relationship between lawyers and Congress, right? They're ba- basically, you know, they're basically making laws for the rich people. That's right. Uh, for instance, I'll give you an example, okay? The, the more passive your income, the less you're taxed. That's right. That's right. The more active you are at your income, the higher it's taxed. So I don't know if it's a conspiracy against the working man. I don't care, dude. The rules are the rules. When you sit down and play Monopoly or Pokemon or 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 I play I play uh, uh, this little game with my daughter on uh, on my iPhone. 
Dude, I don't care who made the rules. <laughs> you got to play by them. How do I win, baby? Right. How do I win, right? right? Because right. the rules don't know whether you're black or white or 17 years old or 71 years old. They don't know, man. They just know mm -hmm. this cat's playing by the rules. And so we're going to reward him if he understands them. Jay, uh, Grant, two things my dad taught me. It's not what you make. It's what you keep. That's the first yep. thing. And the second thing is not what you buy. It's what you pay. So if uh -huh. you can live by those two rules, I think you're going to be able to crush whatever you're doing. Yeah, yeah um, but let me just say this. I think your dad, your dad had a little bit of limited thinking right there, okay? Yeah. You well, know, because it is what you make, dude. Oh, well, yes. But what I'm saying, it's not what, only what you make, but it's what you keep. So as far as the real estate yeah. with, the, with the depreciation and all that, you know, at the end of the day, the, the government does these things. This is their rationale. They want real estate people to, to afford this housing because the government can't do it. So they're yeah. trying to give uh, businesses an incentive to do it because they can't get in and build these. Have you ever gone and seen the SROs that the government's trying to put up? They can't do housing. So that's their excuse to give the cost seg and all this other stuff to give the, you know, the, that I guess. The economy too. Yeah, that's what they're trying to do. So I yeah, mean, like, yeah, so, I mean, I don't know what what their reasoning is you know i, I, I doubt care. i doubt there is i doubt i doubt it's for the good of mankind <laughs> you know <laughs> so, so I like to think. but 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 i just know look I, i'm a simple guy okay when i invest in something my, my investments are all simple my, i invest money so i can get more money period now in my companies in my companies these companies here where i'm writing books and uh, coaching companies and building out Cardone University. Th that that I invest money to make my products better, so I can reach more clients, so I can make more money. Okay, mm -hmm. look. My, at the end of the day, I want to help people. I cannot help people. I broke. Mother Teresa couldn't help people without having money. If right. Jesus Christ was here today, he would have a fleet of golf streams. He would have his own studio. He would be streaming everywhere he could. Right. That's so right. so. I need my business to be simple, okay? And, and, and I love real estate. I particularly love the multifamily deal because we are, and I think you guys would agree with this, becoming every day more and more of a renter nation. Yep, I agree with that. That game's I'm not, not going to change. And I don't want to be at the high end, though. I don't want to be at the high end because everybody's got decisions. You, do you want to go Section 8, you know, government housing? Do you want to go eight or nine hundred dollars a month rent? Do you want to go fifteen hundred? Do you want to go to three thousand? I don't want to be at the top end of this deal. So, and I don't want to be at the bottom either. Go ahead. Yeah. No. With that being said, what's your uh, investment strategy? Do you have a, a strategy or a framework that you follow? Because um, you're talking about um, you don't want to be Section Eight. What what is it, what is your uh, specific focus? Uh, my focus is, you know, m median, median, right there in the middle. Okay, like what that doesn't get so affected. So, you know, a guy, a guy making fifty grand a year. Yeah, I'm written to a guy that makes fifty or sixty grand a year most of the time. Now, the reason that reason that's my target is because that guy doesn't know whether we have recession or economic mm -hmm. uh, parade. That's right. He, he, nothing changes for him. Okay. Literally, literally a guy making 50 grand, you could go on hard times. He doesn't really know that we're having hard times. Dude, nothing changed. Right. Well, it's a C property. That's what you, you want a blue collar worker who's going to be there and he'll never leave. If you treat that guy like gold, he's never leaving that apartment. Yeah. He's yeah, going to stay there. I'm probably a level above C properties. I'm probably more like a B. B, okay. You, you okay. think you think a, a C property is uh, nine hundred dollars a month, man? It all depends not on what, our market. Is no, not. it all it all really depends. I mean, hey, listen, if you're in New York, a C might a, a C That's property right. might be nine hundred bucks. In Tennessee, uh, it's not. In Tennessee, it's a B plus, A minus. But yeah, it all yeah, depends yeah, what yeah, market yeah. you know. Yeah, we, and we fluctuate between you know we go from C to, to like B minus. That's that's kind of our sweet spot personally. But yeah, yeah, that's cool. Grant, well, how's your average hold time? Do you like to buy and flip these, or do you like to hold these things out and just cash flow out these babies? Well, I, again, I take the worst case scenario, so I assume that I'm stuck with this deal for the rest of my life. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to be selling in a cycle that's bad. Okay. You know, I just wrote an article on LinkedIn about deflation and inflation and the effect of of it on real estate. You know, I think we're moving into a massive amount of deflation in, in the United States, contrary to what most people think, because they're mm -hmm. buying gold and silver and think that we're going to inflate because there's so much currency been printed. But, um, you know, I just assume I'm holding this thing forever. Now, that being said, my average hold time up until this last cycle where I made a bunch of acquisitions has been about 32 months. Shorter than I would have ever imagined. Mm-hmm. Now, I think that that's going to go out, Gino. I think it's going to get longer for me because the mm -hmm. age that I'm reaching and I, I, I'm becoming, 
I, I need capital less. Okay. So some of my sales in the past have been just to generate new money to buy yes. bigger products. Yep. That's, That's I right. Gotcha. So you, you know, I should have never sold yeah. the first 500 units I bought in San Diego. I should have never sold any of them. Oh, San Diego is crazy. You can't even buy anything now. You probably tripled, quadrupled your money on those things because that, that's, an, that's an emerging market. I mean, that just emerged like crazy. You talk about yeah. it. A uh, place that just went nuts. I mean, it's it's eight hundred grand for a single family house that's uh, eighteen hundred square feet. I mean, yeah. I, we don't even look at that market. Unfortunately, it's something that you can't even forget cash flow. I mean, you, you can't even buy anything there now. So yeah, but it's, but let me just say this, okay? And, and I was ref, uh, was going to say this earlier about like I'd like to get a ten or twelve percent return, but one of the mistakes that I've made, I should have, particularly in my situation, because I had two other companies that were working, I should have bought. I should have invested in lower return properties mm-hmm. in better locations because I would have made a much bigger bang on the yep. exit. Yep. Yep. That's, that's, but, but, that's I, not- but, but, but I'm greedy, man. I, I, I'm not really greedy. I'm scared. No. I'm a scared investor. Okay. I, I run scared. I, 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 you're I wanted to now cast- you're getting on the back end though too, right? So you, you, you were going for the immediate return and instead of getting it on the back end where you could cash out for more. I was just scared. Yeah. My worst case scenario, the worst case scenario can, can if, you, if you buy the way I buy, yeah. assuming the worst case scenario, you're going to miss really good properties because they're not going to pencil out. But you're going to be in the game for the long haul and you're not going to bust out. I, I prefer your, your beginning strategy and that's what we're currently doing because we're buying for cash flow. Yeah. And if, if it appreciates, great. We're forcing appreciation every day. We got, a, we got a framework. We go in. We do our little touches to it and we, we force the appreciation. But you're not speculating at that point. And I yeah. think it's a more sound investment the way you've been currently investing than hoping for the big payoff on the back end. Yeah, but I think it's, it's you know. Yeah, and, and when you when you guys say you're forcing appreciation, means you're improving the property. That's right. Yeah, the NOI, net operating income. You're either getting the income up, or you're getting those expenses down. A combination of both, and yeah. all of a sudden, that at the end of the day, that's what that's what multifamily is all about. I think that's one of the big differences between that and singles. And the other one is the financing. How are you financing your deals? Are you going all cash? Because I just I wanted to go into the Cleveland ten, Cleveland Ohio market. Call the broker up, and he's saying everyone from California, New York are coming in. They're buying all cash deals, three, four, five, ten million bucks, and I mean all cash, and they're not getting any kind of discount. They're going to be getting ten percent off the asking price. So how, how are you uh, financing? Financing your deals. Well, you know, I think people are going to Cleveland because of LeBron. They That's just right, follow baby. LeBron. Right? They say, <laughs> just James. follow the king, dude. <laughs> follow the king. Uh-huh. So, so, um, you know, I, I use, uh, I, I don't pay cash for my deals. My deals are big. So mm-hmm. I don't, I'm not walking around with $25 million, $30 million cash all Did the I time. Like, yeah, the plump. <laughs> <laughs> you know? um, and, and look, at the bottom line is, you know, money is so cheap today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you got treasuries today at one thirty five, I think. Yeah. Uh, maybe one forty. I, I can buy a couple points over that. So I'm buying. I'm I'm doing deals three at three and a half percent interest yeah. with four and five years of interest only. Um, four and five years, Jake. You hear that? We're getting twelve months and we're thrilled. We're getting, we're getting twelve months interest only. So did you say you uh, got you got, what? Four and five years. Oh yeah, dude. I'm doing. I, I got. I got. Yeah, yeah, five years of IO on 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 a fifty six million eight seventy five percent of fifty six million whatever that is. Yeah, so you're not cash two. flowing on that, are you? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> yeah, no, no, but but you see, here's the problem with that. Okay, what's okay? the problem? This is synthetic. I mean, it's artificial. Mm-hmm. So so I go into those deals. Those deals are going to do ten and fourteen percent from day one. Mm-hmm. Because the interest only, right? Yeah, yeah, which means though that that the prices are getting elevated because the rates coming yeah. down. So I can actually, and other buyers can justify paying a higher price because the rates came down to you. So yep. if you're making decisions on cash flow, now, and sooner or later, for, five for 10 years, right? Say again? You lock for 10 on those? Yeah, yeah, I yep. lock for 10. Yeah. Um, sooner or later, those five years are going to be up. Okay. So at that point, then it's not going to be interest only at three and a half percent. It's going to be interest only and principal, but I'm going to be paying my debt down. Right? That's right. <clears throat> My thinking is five years from now, rent should be a little higher. I know expenses are going to be higher. Mm-hmm. So you got you to you know what you're doing, man. You, you, you know, everybody out there that's thinking about investing, okay, the, a, a couple pieces of advice that I would give you is like, don't bother with two and three and four units. Just skip. Skip. Go to let, – let 12 or 16 be your minimum number. You know, get get to a, don't, don't if you can figure out how to buy two, you can figure out how to buy sixteen. That's right. That's right. 
Don't you think, though, investors have to have some type of value that they got to give people? Because someone's getting into the space. They have no money. If they have experience on how to manage these properties, raise the money, go out there, get a partner, get some equity in the game, get some skin in the game. And, and that's how Jake started. Jake started 25 unit. He was a W-2 guy. I, I knew the game. I knew how to analyze. But he was willing to go out there, knock on doors, our first deal, start collecting. So I think that's how people got to start. And everyone's got, to, like you said, I had a limiting belief before. But that limiting belief, you got to shatter because you've got to create value. You've got to bring value to the table. And if you can't get it yourself, raise the damn money up and, and start start to get going. You know, or, or, or the other alternative is is you find somebody – somebody that's doing like what I'm doing and you mm-hmm. ride on top of them. Now, this is not a very popular model because most guys investing in real estate at, at the level I'm playing at now, mm-hmm. they're not putting any of their own money in. Yep. They're raising all the money. Yep. So let's say, let's say a deal is 30 million and they need 10 million down that they, they go raise the whole 10 million. They don't have any money in the deal. What I do is I put the 10 million down and then uh, close friends, family, close employees, executives, they ride on my money. They basically buy a part of my position yes. and just ride in my deal because they're, they're adding value to me. And the value they're adding to me is they, they are passive, quiet, no problem investors. That's, and uh, it, it, oh, sorry, and they, they, they reduced my position in the property. Look, I got a lot of money in real estate, okay? Like every penny I have, all my net worth is in real estate. So me giving away pieces of deals, it, I'm still heavily invested. It's like a guy being at a, at a blackjack table and he's betting 5000 a hand and you come up and put $50 on. Who are you pulling for, you or him? Right. Uh-huh. Yeah, and, and guys, what, him, what Grant's talking about is syndicating a lot of, and, and we're actually in the same boat as you are. All we raised all our all our money. You know, we got a you know Gino's uh, brother Marco gets in on some deals with us, but it's really it's just us. We're not syndicating. What Grant's talking yeah. about is syndicating. What yeah. these guys will do is they'll raise the money, and then they'll get say fifty percent on the back end and after yeah. they reposition the property. They'll sell it. They won't put any of their own money in, and then they'll get fifty percent of the proceeds at the end when they sell it. Yeah, and, and, and they're getting management fees and yeah, this fee and jack fees, fee and, 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 and uh, yeah. uh, uh, fee and <laughs> exactly right because uh-huh. they have to, dude. That's the only yes. way they can make their money. In my case, when you're riding, I, I mean, this is the the thing I would tell people to do. Look, if you have a main job and you don't really understand real estate yet, okay, look for a guy like me or like you guys and buy a piece of a deal they've already done. Don't buy a deal that they're looking at. Buy a deal that they've already done. Oh, that's a great strategy. Never, never well, thought of it. It's basically it's it's stable at that point, fixed, that's and you right. know your, what your return's going to be. That's right. Yeah, and say, hey man, do you have a piece of one of your deals that you want to sell to me? You wow. know, and then now, then if you if that would have been you say ten years ago, and someone would have came to you and said, let me buy a piece of that deal, maybe you still have those San Diego properties because you sell a piece of them and you didn't have to sell the whole thing. So that would have been adding value to Grant. And also adding value to the guy that's trying to get in. So that's a win-win. I think that's a great scenario to propose yeah. to somebody. Yeah, because I, I think most people just don't have the time to do the, the, the homework. It's a lot. This. It's a lot, man. Yeah, I, but, Grant, first don't property, stress, I got beat up. Uh, Grant, don't you stress commit, study, and predict? Isn't that what you stress? So, I mean, if you want to get into real estate, shouldn't you commit yourself to educating yourself before you give your money off to, let's say, Grant Cardone or somebody else? Because you really yeah, got to learn it. Yeah, yeah. But, but I mean, the real – look, I got a friend, Matt Monero. Okay, He runs a big trucking – uh, company. They basically, dude, the guy makes millions of dollars a year in his trucking business. Mm-hmm. For him to go start studying real estate would actually be counterproductive to him at this point. Okay, that makes my, sense. My, my twin brother invests in my deals. Okay, he, he's got no business being in real estate. He's got he's got a company that they're building out right now that could could do a hundred million bucks a year. But you know? they need to get in with a guy like you though, because it's going to help. It's going to reduce their taxable income too. So it's going to be it's going to be yeah. great if they can get in. And if yeah. they have, I think it's. I think what we're finding here is you got to find somebody that's reliable that you can get in with that you can trust. That's not going to, you know, be a well, Ponzi guy. Right? And, and, and the way to do that, the way to protect yourself from the Ponzi guy, the Ponzi syndicator. And by yeah. the way, there are a bunch of them out there. Out there. Okay. Um, the way to protect yourself is, hey, how much money did you already buy the deal? That 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 is the ultimate way to protect yourself. He already owns the deal. He's not buying a deal. Mm-hmm. OK, people syndicate deals because they're trying to raise money to go get a deal. Mm-hmm. So if he's already owns the deal, like I own a deal I bought um, in Wellington, just outside of Miami. 
It's about 45 minutes outside of Miami. I put $10 million down in it, okay? My brother calls and says, hey, do you have any of your deals that you want to sell? Yeah, dude, I bought a deal a year ago, year and a half ago. I got $10 million in it. So he buys a million of it. Dude, I'm all, he knows I'm committed. <laughs> That's right. Right. So he goes, he, go, he goes to sleep at night and he says, I'm praying, pray. I pray for my brother's investment to do well. Right. Because his money's riding on mine. Just mind. keep rocking, that, baby. That way you know it's not a Ponzi scheme. Right. Yeah, right. You know he's not going to steal from you because if I steal from that deal, most of it's out, out of my money. Right. That's right. Sounds like my brother, Jake, huh? <laughs> but, uh, just, just riding the Geno wave, baby. Ride, you got to ride the wave, bro. Yeah, and it's, ride the wave, it's man. Far, it's far to family. You got to take care of family, you know? Grant, how did you build your teams for, you know, for real estate? I mean, who, who do you, you think is like the best team member as far as building the real estate and getting your whole, you know, getting your whole ship moving forward? Well, you know, uh, what I do is I, I focus on the things I'm good at. So I'm good at buying the deal. I, I know a deal. Look, I know, I know when a deal feels right to me. I can literally do a Google search and know whether I want to buy that property or not. And I bought a lot of deals without ever visiting them. I, I Ela- tell you right elaborate now. on that because that's a little, little subjective. Like what, what is it that you see you say, man, that's a winner? Dude, dude it is totally, totally subjective. There's, for the, my first test is a subjective test. Does it feel good? The gut test. There's a, there's a deal, 528 units in St. Petersburg right now in Tampa, Florida. I've never been to the property. That's a hard okay. I looked at the brochure. I Googled it. I know I want to buy that property. I, I know that I want to buy that property enough to know when Thursday's the deadline that I'm going to fly in Wednesday night, meet the broker, and I'm going to get that deal. So you got to call the offers. Thursday's the deadline. Yeah, I, w- I won't be a part of the call to offers. Okay. I'm going to tell them I refuse to be part of the call to offers. I'm not going to feed your little freaking fire. That's a great. And, I like that, Jake. I do too. And, and I, I, I'm done with them, dude. I'm done. Uh, they're just using you. No, I know. It's, it's, it's. They're just trying to bid it up. Where we go man, through man. it all the time. Hey, man. Even if you're not a player for it, man, just make an offer on yep. it. Have you heard that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, why? Yeah. He doesn't want to tell the seller he only got two offers. That's exactly right. No. no yeah, I got biting. seven, dude. Seven of them. Five of them are shit. And right. you know, you know what we're finding is we're getting into these called offers now. And this was we just did a, it was a, a little seven million dollar deal, one hundred fifty units. We got in, we're in third place behind two REITs in our market, right? Yeah, it was it was August, and basically they're like, nope, you guys are out. But they knew going into it, the REITs were going to retrade a million bucks, and the thing was going to fall apart. So come, uh, I was at Gino's house on New Year's. We get a call from the broker. Uh, yeah, I think fell apart, and uh, and so we're like uh, we're still there at the number. And we end up getting it done two months later. And it was yeah. like we could have saved all that time and BS because we came in at a firm number. Dude, let me let me give you guys a little tip, okay? Yeah. When you're doing the deal, yeah, ask the guy, hey man, how many guys you got? He's gonna lie to you. Oh, oh yeah. there's he five, six guys. He's always lying. They always lie. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> then you just ask, what yeah. number am I right now? What number am I, man? What number am I? Well, that's what he, t- he was telling us. We were in third place. That's what he kept telling us. No, no, no. Before he picked, though. See, see, here's the deal. The guy had already had his guy, dude, before you guys put your right. bid in. That's right. right. They already knew who they wanted to pick. So before you go to the deal, before I even make – like this deal in St. Petersburg. Hey, man, how many guys you got right now? Six. So I'm like, okay, how many of them are real, dude? Two? Who have you picked already? Who's your favorite? Uh, 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 you know, it's not up to me. Dude, come on, man. If it was up to you, who would it be? Because <laughs> you know they're pushing their guy to the front of the line. Uh-huh. Huh? They're pushing their guy to the front well, of the sure, line. Well, sure, man. Yeah. Why, hey, why would you pick me? Me and you have never done a deal before, right. man. I know I'm six, seven, eight, nine, ten on the list. Where am I at, man? You don't know me. You've never done a deal with me. Why would you take a risk with me? See, what I'm trying to do is move myself up the list. Yeah. <laughs> well, you got to sell yourself to this guy as to why you're the guy. Well, you've got, you got the credibility. That's the thing. We talk about that. We had the credibility with this broker. We already had 500 units in the market. So he already knew we were serious and he already knew we were players. He yeah. saw strategy. The strategy worked. So it wasn't right. So why didn't y'all go hard from day one, man? It's the learning process. I, yeah, that's a good question. I, 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 why didn't we go hard, Jake? Explain no, he that. Wanted, he, wanted, uh, he wanted to go with us. He just said it was, it was all about the offer. It was weird. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, dude, if you just said, hey, I'll give you 25000 cash right here, no, right had, now. No, we had 50K, 50K we were putting up to go down right then. We we're going to do no, it. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about a down payment, dude. No, I know. Not. We went hard when we did it on the, on the second go around. No, hard no, from, no. Day, from before the due diligence. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> now, let me tell you a little trick right here. Hold okay? on, Gino. We, we did go, though, didn't we? Oh, we were, not hard before no, the due diligence. You didn't go, bro. dude. If you'd have gone hard. No, no, okay. No, no, no. You're I right. Tell my wife this all the time. You go hard. You go hard, baby. You lo- she loves it when you go <laughs> so, hard, baby. <laughs> so, 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 
Dude, if you got it, what you got, you can do is you can go hard, dude, and then negotiate your PSA, mm-hmm. your, your, like your purchase no, and sale agreement. That's you. right. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff in that PSA, man, that changes things. But Grant, you're, you're, you're flying in, right? You're going to go in. What's your pitch to him when you go in there? You're going to say, listen, dude, you my pitch remember- to him is going to be this. Hey, man, look, you've never done a deal with me. Do you agree with that? I agree with that. Yes. Good. Why would you do one with me? Because I want a commission. I want to make money. That's why I want to get this deal yeah, done. Yeah, he's, he's got he's got four other buyers, man. He wants why me, he wants man? A, he wants someone that's going to get the deal done. That's so what he I'm wants. going in there with a letter from the Fannie Mae. I'm going in with a letter from two or three other brokers that have done deals with me to say he doesn't retrade, he doesn't play games, he's a closer. Okay, I'm going to get a commitment from that cat to either sell to me or not sell to me. I love and it. that is Grant Cardone's sales training. Get it in writing, right? You're going to get the stuff in Guys, writing. write that down. That is the best stuff that we've yes. got on this entire call. Get a, say that again, Grant. I want to hear it again. Letter from Fanny. What else are you bringing? What else are you bringing? Letter from Fanny. It's all in the deal, bro. It's all in the deal, okay? It's all in the deal you make. Yep. If, you can't, if you can't get the deal, you can't make money. You know? So, like, I bought a deal. There was 38 bidders on a deal. I knew I had two buyers the day I closed the deal. I knew I had two buyers. The, the reason I'm saying that is because if I got 38 people bidding on one deal, <laughs> okay, tomorrow after I get it, two of them are still buyers. That's right. They would pay me a premium to have my deal. Mm-hmm. So I got to go check this St. Petersburg deal out. I know if it feels good, subjective, if it feels good, mm-hmm. good, then I'm going to pursue it. Okay, then I got to do my objective. Does it meet my criteria? Does it handle my worst case scenario? Can I get to the lowest occupancy in the last three or four years? I use a trailing 12 only. I do not use a future performa. I never assume a rent Buy bump. Actuals. I don't do any of the value add stuff. Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to spend seven grand and I'm going to get back 200 bucks a month. I don't do any of that, dude. My deal is simple. The world goes to hell. Will it cash flow? Can I ask you a question real quick? Are you buying? Are you buying Cleveland? Is that where y'all are buying? No, we're no. in East Tennessee. Well, actually, I, I have a student. I have a student who wants me to fly out with him and analyze the market. I, I'm not crazy about Cleveland. The, the, you know, as far as populations, you know, dropping. Everyone's talking about inner cities. Everyone's talking about all these inner cities getting built up, and I can't figure out what the attraction with Cleveland is because your population is dropping. It's a rust belt. It's yeah. a crap. Well, let's go to East Tennessee. Let's go to where y'all buy. Y'all, y'all, y'all. y'all Tennessee, we're in, yeah, we're in Knoxville, uh, yeah. Knoxville area, and we do kind of similar to you, but we we have a few in like West Knoxville, and then we do submarkets right around Knoxville. Yeah. So, you Dude, know, if you hey, if you, you you know, you ever need some help on one of those deals, let me know. Man, I'll shoot. You. I'm gonna I'll, I'll shoot it over to your assistant afterwards. We'll shoot the underwriting and show you what we just did. Okay, for sure. Okay. And we were looking at a thirty million dollar deal, um, but we we're we we're bidding it at about twenty three. We just you know couldn't knock it out. Uh, we couldn't get there with them, and they said they locked it up. But I think this is going to be one of those ones where it comes back to us again because they threw in a higher price. It's it's going to bust out in a few months, but we'll see. So we'll, we'll we'll keep you in mind. Grant, let me ask you a question. I'm about to move down to Jacksonville, Florida. I was down in Florida for ten month uh, ten weeks with the family. Um, came back. I'm up back up in New York two days. I want you to go back down to Jacksonville. What do you think about the Jacksonville market as far as it being a secondary I market? Mean, uh, you know what everybody tells you about Jacksonville is it's 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 hard to get out. So once you get in it's Jacksonville, yeah. dude, come on, Jacksonville, man. <laughs> Talk to bro, me. Bro, if, you're Chinese, Holden, if you're Chinese, you're not going to Jacksonville. You're going to Miami. You're going to Orlando. You're going to Tampa, maybe not even Tampa. You know, think, think about world influence, right? Mm-hmm. The Europeans are coming to buy apartments in America. That's right. The, the South Americans are under, starting to understand for the first time, starting to understand the apartment business in America. We have never, ever in America in a hundred years ha- had other countries understand the way we buy part the way we do rentals it- it's a completely different business model in america than other parts of the world so i wouldn't go to jacksonville dun dun got that, dun, 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 well, dun. I, I gotta get out of new york bro so i'm fine i gotta i gotta get nice weather i was driving a golf cart i was loving life down there i just i i you know i love the Dude, why are you gonna stop in jacksonville man you know, you know, I got friends down there. I just love it. I love the people in Florida. It's just a nice Andy's place. Getting, and he's getting away from that six percent state income tax in New York. Yeah. You know, well, that's just, just stupid, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's that's, that's my. Why I moved, that's why I moved. I was from New York too. That's why I moved to Knoxville. I wanted to get uh, just you know lower state income taxes. Well, no state income taxes and uh, property taxes are like nothing yeah. here. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, all right, let's uh, let's hop back here, Grant Cardone. What is your best habit for success? My best header. Habit, best habit for success. Uh, We're not playing soccer right now. 
Uh, my best habit for success, I don't know, man. Shit, get up. Get up, kick down doors, make it happen every day. Get up, show up. Fucking wait for the magic, bro. Bring the pain, make the magic happen. You know, something's going to happen. Something's good's going to happen. You just got to show up, man. You know, go, go, go armed. Yeah. Be ready. Have one in the freaking chamber. Fill up the hopper. I got you. You know, and, uh, 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 you know, keep looking all the time, dude. When it's bad, look. When it's good, look. Look good when you look bad. I don't know. Shit. <laughs> maybe maybe we got to get this guy rhyming here a little bit more. <laughs> got the Grant Cardone uh, mixtape coming out. Um, what has been your biggest mistake in business and uh, anything that you can uh, relate to the folks to avoid? Do not, not. My business, biggest mistake was in real estate or just business, period? Either one. Either one. Not, not thinking big enough, man. I, sh- I should have gone big from the get-go. You know, I was buying, I was buying my first deal was, I don't know, whatever it was, you know, did I should have been thinking about 300 units from the get go. I yeah. should have been thinking about 3000 units. I should have syndicated. I should have, I should have bar. I should have gone. I should have done earlier on what I'm going to do now. You know, it's well, the same work. It's the same amount of work. I talk about this in the 10 X rule. Okay. Like it is the same amount of energy and work. So you can either, you can either go little, you can go medium, or you can go large, or you can go giant. It's the same work. We like to talk about that with multis, too, because basically in these bigger deals, you're just adding zeros on. It's the same thing. You're adding more units. You're adding more zeros to the offer. It's Same it's deal. Same you know, and deal. I see people get all lost in the legal and the title, the doc fees. What is this? The PSA. Don't worry about it, man. Your yeah. lawyer and the bank are going to work it out. That's why... That's why I love Fannie and Freddie. Okay, I got one guy that I use with Fannie. I send him every one of my deals. I say, hey, dude, how do you see this deal? Me and him see deals objectively the same exact way. So, so I, it already feels good to me, or it doesn't quite feel good to me, or I know it's garbage. I send it to him. He's like, he confirms, dude, this is garbage. Uh, you know, Grant, I kind of like this, but blah, I'm like, yeah, that's, I don't need that. Right, I just looked at eighty-two deals to buy three. Man, it's, it's, and so, that's what's going on right now. I mean, the cap rates are getting compressed. It's it's hard to find a deal right now because it's heating up, and uh, and the deals like that were there two years ago aren't there right now. Yeah, and and we've been seeing that. Um, and, and so just back to the oh, mistakes. Yeah, you know, I should have gone bigger. I should have gone faster. I should have probably built a bigger team. I should have borrowed money, but not borrowed money. I should have raised money. Um, but you know, it's all turned out all right anyway. You doing you doing all right? You're doing all right for yourself. Um, it's, Man, when I start doing it right, dude, this shit's going to blow up. Well, it's not only that, too. We found the bigger deals that we get into, we're actually cash flowing better because the economy's a scale. Uh-huh. So, and, and, and that's another thing to throw in there uh, when you guys do start to go bigger. Um, what has been See, like, I, I got a deal right now, Savannah. Okay, yeah. Savannah. I bought a deal in Savannah. I've been through the second management company now. I'm probably going to go through the third one. Um, it's 200. Why is that? They're just I, don't not performing. I don't know exactly because they, not- they, they I don't know exactly it's it's a uh, you know I don't know okay but you know it's eighty eight percent occupied and I'm still cash flowing yeah so it was a it was a third a thirty two million dollar deal I bought two Christmases ago uh the guy the other guy fell out I was the only buyer at Christmas time that's one of my little tricks by the that's way right. Thanksgiving and Christmas like I'm a buyer that's right that's right and um you know I got a I bought it for twenty nine million. It's, it's not it's not even doing good and it cash flows. So uh, imagine when it does well. Got to yeah, fire that baby up. Um, what project are you excited about right now? What project, man? Shit, I got it. I got my hands full, dude. <laughs> <laughs> man, this is your chance, baby. This is time to promote. What do you got? You know, going I mean, on? I mean, I mean, I'm I'm excited about helping people, man. I'm I'm in a position right now to help a lot of people. We have a tremendous social media reach. Yeah. Um, you know, I got a bunch of projects that are, I, I mean, look, I, I should, all I should do full time is invest in real estate. That's all I should do. But no, that's not what I do. Okay. <laughs> I go off on this stuff. I, I write a book called the millionaire booklet. I'm very excited about this book. It's been translated into 37 languages, 37 or 47, 37 languages. There's only 47 books on the whole planet that have been translated that many times. I'm with the Quran and the Bible, dude. Okay. There you go. <laughs> so, so wow. it's called the millionaire booklet. It's a $10 book. It's freaking awesome. It's going to make millionaires. Uh, I'm excited about this battle that I have going on with Google right now. They're, they're blocking all my, my 
advertisements because the name of my products are the Millionaire Booklet, Playbook to Millions, uh, Make Millions in Business, uh, uh, Make Millions on the Phone. And, and they're like, you can't, you, can't, you can't promise people that. I'm like, dude, you can't promise people that. I can promise them that because I know how to make millions. So, um, so I got this little battle going on with Google and Facebook right now. I kind of like that action. Uh, I got two beautiful kids. I love that deal. I'm starting to travel all around. I got a bunch of interest from other parts of the world. I want to help people. At the end of the day, if you say, Grant, you can only help people or you can only build a $1 billion real estate portfolio. I'd be like, I'm going to help people, man. It's just, it, it feels better. You know? Uh, the good news is I don't have to pick. I get to do them both. So then let me ask you a question. I saw something on your Facebook talking about the haters. How do you deal with the haters? Because you must have a lot of haters out of that because people just like to hate. And, and we're not used to just, it yet. So. I just put this in their face. This was actually for them. <laughs> I had a bunch of haters. I told Sherry, I said, man, I sure would like a model plane, a plane of my plane, a model of my plane. <laughs> uh-huh, you know? Okay. Dude, look, the way to handle the haters is to not, it's not to stop and handle them, talk to them, or do anything to them. Dude, the thing to do, man, is to just keep keep flourishing and prospering and succeeding and mm-hmm. what do they have to do with your mission nothing unless 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 you turn around to pay attention to them gino's got these chicks stalking them online and not in a good way it's <laughs> tough because you know, we're not used to getting that reach all of a sudden you put stuff out you put your heart out there you put your love into the stuff and people are hating on you for no reason it's like dude i wrote an article you don't like it just shut up and move on but yeah you know, I, dude i wouldn't even respond person. to him me me and yeah. jared we do this show called young hustlers and, you know, I get notifications on my phone from, from YouTube comments. I probably should take it off. Anyway, last night I got the one that we did, what to do if you have $10,000, how to invest $10,000. Dude, there's so much hate on this one video. Waste of time. You wasted an hour. You never told me what to do. This was a commercial. You just act, you're a white boy that wants to be black. You know, you're a rapper. You got, I mean, it was like crazy, right? I'm like, what am I doing reading this? It is what it is, man. Look, if you start when you start going this way, you know, you you you're gonna you're gonna get people that, you know, say you don't know what you're talking about. It's all good. You probably don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Anyways, Grant, this has been awesome. Really appreciate the time you took out today, and uh, and we'll look forward. Maybe someday we'll do it again. Hey, you guys are awesome, man. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Thanks Grant. Grant. That was real estate beast Grant Cardone. Man, he is really making it happen out there. Guys, if you like this, we got more content coming out for you this Thursday at 5 p.m. Go to jakeandgino.com and sign up for our webinar. You're not going to want to miss this. And if you like the podcast, go to our iTunes page, give us a like, give us a comment, and subscribe. Uh, We do appreciate the support. Talk to you next week. We trust that you enjoy the Wheelbarrow Profits podcast. Visit jakeandgino.com, your one-stop shop for everything multifamily. See you next time when Jake and Gino share more of their investing secrets with you.